cooperation with developing countries. Be trustworthy friends and sincere partners forever. March 25th, 2013. Speech at the Julius Nieri International Convention Center in Dar es Salaam, Tanzania. Your Excellency President, Jakaya Marisha Kowedi. Ladies and gentlemen, dear friends, Habari, Habari. Footnote 1. Habari, Swahili, meaning hello. End of footnote 1. It both gives me great pleasure and fills me with warmth to meet so many friends here at the Julius Nieri International Convention Center. This is my first visit to Africa as the Chinese president, but my sixth visit to the African continent. The moment I set foot on this beautiful land, I was overwhelmed by the friendship of the Tanzanian people towards the Chinese people. The government and people of Tanzania held a special and grand welcoming ceremony for me. It shows not only the importance you accord to me and my delegation, but also the profound traditional friendship between the two countries and two peoples. Let me begin by extending on behalf of the Chinese government and people, and in my own name, warm greetings and best wishes to all the friends present today and to the brotherly people of Tanzania and across Africa. I also wish to thank you, President Kuwaiti, and the Tanzanian government for your warm hospitality. Tanzania is a cradle of mankind. The Tanzanian people have a glorious tradition, and you have made a substantial contribution to the victory of the African people's struggles for independence and their fights against apartheid. Under the leadership of President Kuwaiti, Tanzania has maintained political stability, made big strides in development, and played an important role in African and international affairs. The Chinese people rejoice at what you have achieved and sincerely wish the brotherly people of Tanzania new and still greater success. When I visit Africa, I am always struck by two things. One is its continuous progress. Each time I come to Africa, I am deeply impressed by new progress in development, which is most encouraging. The other is the warmth of the African people. The goodwill of the African people towards the Chinese people is as warm and unforgettable as the sunshine in Africa. As an African saying goes, a river runs deep because of its source. The friendly exchanges between China and Africa date back a long time. In the 1950s and 60s, the first generation leaders of the PRC, Mao Zedong, Zhou Enlai, and others, and African statesmen of the older generation, ushered China-Africa relations into a new era. Footnote 2. Zhou Enlai, 1898 to 1976 was a Marxist, Chinese, proletarian, revolutionary, 
statesman, military strategist, and diplomat, as well as one of the major leaders of the Communist Party of China and the People's Republic of China, and co-founder of the Chinese People's Liberation Army. End of footnote 2. Since then, the Chinese and African peoples have supported and cooperated with each other in our respective endeavors to fight against colonialism and imperialism and win independence and liberation, and in the pursuit of development and national renewal. A fraternal bond of shared destiny has been forged between us. Today, thanks to the concerted efforts of both sides, China-Africa relations are on a fast track of all-round development. We have set up the Forum on China-Africa Cooperation and established a new type of strategic partnership. Our cooperation in various fields has delivered many gains. In 2012, China-Africa trade approached U.S. $200 billion worth. Over 1.5 million mutual visits were made between the two sides. China's cumulative direct investment in Africa topped U.S. $15 billion. This year marks the 50th anniversary of the dispatch of Chinese medical teams to Africa. In the past five decades, 18,000 Chinese medical personnel have worked in Africa, providing medical care and treatment to 250 million local patients. The African people, on their part, have given full support and selfless help to the Chinese people. When the 2008 Beijing Olympic torch relay came to Dar es Salaam. The Tanzanian people welcomed the Olympic flame with song and dance, as if celebrating their own festival. This jubilant occasion is etched in the memory of the Chinese people. In the wake of the devastating earthquake in Wenchuan, African countries rushed to China's assistance. An African country with a population of fewer than 2 million and not well off itself, made a generous donation of 2 million euros to the quake area. About 1 euro per person. This outpouring of compassion warmed our hearts. In regional and international affairs, China and Africa have stepped up coordination and collaboration, and successfully upheld the common interests of developing countries. Friendship and cooperation between the Chinese and African peoples have become a symbol of China-Africa relations and are well regarded by the international community. Our joint endeavors and the fruitful results therefrom over the past five decades, have laid a solid groundwork and provided valuable experience for furthering China-Africa relations. A review of this period of history shows that China-Africa relations have not grown to this stage overnight, nor are they a gift from some third party. Rather, they have been nurtured and built step by step by our two sides over the years as we met challenges and faced difficulties together. As a Chinese saying goes, when we drink water from the well, we should not forget those who dug it. We will always honor the memory of all those pioneers who devoted themselves to building China-Africa relations. As we move ahead, we can always draw strength from history. A review of this period of history 
shows that China and Africa have always shared a common destiny. Similar historical experience, common development tasks, and shared strategic interests have bound us together. We both view the other's development as our own opportunity, and we both seek to promote mutual development and prosperity through closer cooperation. A review of this period of history shows that the defining features of China-Africa relations are sincerity, friendship, mutual respect, equality, mutual benefit, and common development. We get along well and treat each other as equals. Neither side seeks to impose its will on the other. China has done its best to help Africa's development. Yet China is always grateful to African countries and peoples for their firm support and selfless help over the years. On issues involving the core interests of either side, we have taken a clear position and given unequivocal support to each other. And a review of this period of history shows that if we are to maintain the strong vitality of China-Africa relations, we must keep pace with the times and forge ahead in an innovative and enterprising spirit. Over the past 50 years, at every crucial juncture of China-Africa relations, both sides were able to approach these relations with vision identify new converging interests and growth areas for cooperation, and bring bilateral relations to new heights. Such an enterprising spirit of cutting a way through when confronted by mountains and building a bridge when blocked by a river is crucial for steadily upgrading China-Africa cooperation. Ladies and gentlemen, China-Africa relations, enjoying a favorable international and domestic environment, as well as popular support, stand at a new historical starting point. Africa, a continent of hope and promise, has become one of the fastest growing regions in the world and is forging ahead like a galloping African lion. China, on its part, continues to enjoy a sound development momentum. The foundation of China-Africa cooperation is more solid, and our cooperation mechanisms have been further improved. Advancing China-Africa cooperation represents the trend of the times and the will of our peoples. This is what I want to tell you, my dear friends. In this new era, China-Africa relations have become more important with increasing common interests, instead of less important with fewer common interests. China will intensify, not weaken, its efforts to develop relations with Africa. First, we will continue to treat our African friends with sincerity. Nothing is more valuable than true friends. The China-Africa traditional friendship is what we cherish dearly. Unity and cooperation with African countries have always been an important foundation of China's foreign policy. This will never change, even should China grow stronger and enjoy a higher international standing. China believes in equality among all countries, big or small, strong or weak, rich or poor. China uphol upholds justice and opposes the practice of the big bullying the small, the strong lording over the weak and the rich oppressing the poor, just as it opposes interference in others' internal affairs. China and Africa will continue to support each other on issues involving their core interests 
and major concerns. China will continue to firmly support Africa's just position on regional and international affairs and uphold the common interests of developing countries. China will continue to firmly support Africa in its endeavors to independently resolve African issues and make a greater contribution to peace and security in Africa. There is no one-size-fits-all development model in the world. The diversity of civilizations and development models should be respected by all. China will continue to firmly support African countries in their quest for development paths that suit their national conditions and increase exchanges of experience in governance with African countries. This will enable us to draw on each other's time-honored civilizations and development practices and better promote the common development and prosperity of China and Africa. To all Chinese, harmony in the family leads to success in everything. Africa is a big family of shared destiny. This year marks the 50th anniversary of the founding of the Organization of African Unity, a milestone in the African people's pursuit of greater strength through unity. We sincerely hope that Africa will make bigger strides in seeking strength from unity and achieve new success in peace and development and we will firmly support Africa in this endeavor. China is dedicated to developing strong ties with Africa. We also hope to see better relations between other countries and Africa. Africa belongs to the African people. In promoting relations with Africa, all countries should respect Africa's dignity and independence. Second, we seek to deliver real outcomes in conducting cooperation with Africa. China both champions and applies mutually beneficial cooperation with Africa. China views its own development as closely connected with that of Africa and the interests of the Chinese people as closely connected with those of the African people. China shares development opportunities with Africa. China sincerely hopes to see faster development in Africa and a better life for the African people. While pursuing its own development, China has provided support and assistance to African friends to the best of our ability. In recent years, in particular, China has increased assistance to and cooperation with Africa. We will honor every commitment we have made to Africa in both letter and spirit. China will continue to expand investment and financing cooperation with Africa. Follow through on the commitment of providing a U.S. $20 billion dollar credit line to Africa from 2013 to 2015. Implement the partnership on transnational and transregional infrastructural development. Enhance mutually beneficial cooperation in agriculture and manufacturing. And help Africa exploit its wealth of resources and achieve independent and sustainable development. As the saying goes, it is more helpful to teach people how to fish than to just give them fish. China will actively implement the African Talent Program, train 30,000 African professionals in various areas, provide 18,000 government scholarships to Africa between 2013 and 2015, and increase 
technology transfer, and experience sharing with Africa. As its own economy and strength increase, China will continue to provide due assistance to Africa with no political strings attached. Third, we will continue to build a close bond of friendship with Africa. The Chinese and African peoples share a natural feeling of affinity towards each other. We Chinese believe that the pleasure of life lies in having bosom friends. Then how can China and Africa become bosom friends? I believe that in-depth dialogue and concrete action are the way to strike a chord in our hearts. Our two peoples form the foundation and lifeline of China-Africa relations. Therefore, the growth of our relations should be more people-oriented. In recent years, growing China-Africa relations have brought our peoples closer to each other than ever before. Some African performers have become popular stars in China. Great Life of a Wife, a Chinese TV series about how life unfolds in ordinary Chinese families, has become quite a hit in Tanzania. Let me tell you a story about a young Chinese couple. When they were children, they got to know about Africa from Chinese TV programs and have since been captivated by this continent. Later, they got married and decided to make Tanzania their honeymoon destination. So, on their first Valentine's Day after the wedding, they came here on a visit. They were overwhelmed by the hospitality and friendship of the local people and the magnificent savanna of Serengeti. After the couple returned to China, they posted what they had experienced in Tanzania on their blog, which was visited tens of thousands of times and received several hundred comments. This is what they wrote on their blog. We have fallen head over heels in love with Africa, and our hearts will be forever with this fascinating land. This story highlights the natural affinity between the Chinese and African peoples. As long as we keep expanding, people-to-people -people exchanges, friendship between our peoples will strike deep roots and flourish. We will further boost people-to-people -people and cultural exchanges between China and Africa so as to enhance mutual understanding and perception and increase public support for China-Africa friendship. To promote China-Africa relations is a cause for the future, and under, an undertaking that calls for unremitting efforts of young people in China and Africa from generation to generation. Both sides should vigorously promote youth exchanges so that China-Africa friendship will be full of vigor and vitality. Fourth, we will resolve problems that may occur in our cooperation with good faith. China and Africa are both experiencing rapid development and each needs to learn more about the other. China will deal with new developments and new problems confronting our relations with sincerity. We should handle such problems in a spirit of mutual respect and mutually beneficial cooperation. I am convinced that there will always be more opportunities than challenges and more solutions than difficulties. Together with the African countries, China has taken 
and will continue to take concrete measures to resolve problems in our economic cooperation and trade. And we will make sure that Africa gains more from its cooperation with China. At the same time, we sincerely hope that African countries will help Chinese enterprises and businessmen in pursuing cooperation in Africa. Ladies and gentlemen, since the birth of the PRC more than 60 years ago, and particularly since the introduction of the reform and opening up policy more than 30 years ago, the CPC has led the Chinese people in opening a path of socialism with Chinese characteristics. China has made historic progress in its development, becoming the second largest economy in the world. China's comprehensive national strength has grown significantly, and our people's living standards have improved markedly. It only took China, a country of over 1.3 billion people, a few decades to travel a journey that took developed countries several centuries to cover. One can easily imagine how many challenges and difficulties China encounters encountered in these years. At present, China remains a populous country with a weak economic foundation and uneven development. Our aggregate GDP is quite large. However, when divided by 1.3 billion, China's per capita GDP is only around the 90th place in the world. Some 128 million Chinese are still living below the poverty line set by the United Nations. To provide a decent life for the over 1.3 billion people, we still have a long way to go, and persistent and strenuous efforts are called for. As China continues to develop, its people will surely achieve a better life. However, no matter how strong it may grow, China will always see in Africa a tried and tested friend. Ladies and gentlemen, China cannot develop in isolation from the rest of the world or Africa. On their part, both the rest of the world and Africa also need China to seek prosperity and stability. Though there is a broad ocean between us, China and Africa share a strong empathy. We are bound not only by profound traditional friendship and closely linked interests, but also by the dreams we each have. More than 1.3 billion Chinese are working hard to realize the Chinese dream of great national renewal, and more than 1 billion Africans are striving to realize the African dream of gaining strength through unity and achieving development and rejuvenation. We, Chinese and Africans, should enhance unity, cooperation, mutual support, and assistance so as to fulfill our dreams. We should also work with the international community to realize the global dream of enduring peace and common prosperity and make a new and even greater contribution to the noble cause of peace and development of mankind. Asante Nasana Footnote 4 Asante Nasana Swahili Meaning Thank You End of footnote 4. Remaining footnote. The forum 
on China Africa Cooperation is a new platform for collective dialogues and cooperation between China and African countries, an effective mechanism to promote South South cooperation. The first ministerial conference was held in October 2000 in Beijing. The Beijing summit and the third ministerial conference was held in November 2006, also in Beijing, attended by Chinese leaders and 48 heads of state and government and representatives from Africa. The Beijing summit passed the declaration of the Beijing summit of the Forum on China-Africa Cooperation and Forum on China-Africa Cooperation Beijing Action Plan 2007 to 2009, confirming a new type of strategic partnership between China and Africa. End of remaining footnote. Forge a stronger partnership between China and Latin America and the Caribbean. June 5th, 2013. Part of the speech at the Senate of Mexico, Mexico City, Mexico. Once again, visiting Latin America, a vibrant and promising continent, I am all the more convinced that with its rich natural endowment, this continent is embracing another golden period of development. We believe that a more prosperous Latin America and the Caribbean will benefit both the rest of the world and China. Our relations with this area have now entered a period of opportunity for rapid growth. We should be visionary in approach, keep abreast of the times, build on traditional friendship, enhance exchanges in all areas, and upgrade cooperation. In so doing, we can forge a stronger partnership of comprehensive cooperation featuring equality, mutual benefit, and common development. Politically, we should treat each other as sincere friends and continue to show understanding and support for each other on issues involving the core interests and major concerns of both sides. Economically, we should seize opportunities created by the shift of growth model on both sides, fully tap cooperation potential, create new cooperation modalities, expand converging interests, and foster an enduring, stable, and mutually beneficial business partnership. Culturally, we should enhance inter-civilizational dialogue and cultural exchanges. As a Chinese saying goes, one should value not only one's own culture, but also the cultures of others, and this will contribute to the flourishing of all cultures. Footnote 1. Fei Xiao Tong, Appreciating Others' Cultures and Human Civilizations. Chinese edition. Inner Mongolia, People's Publishing House. Hohat, 2009, page 262. Fei Xiaotong, 1910 to 2005, was a Chinese sociologist, anthropologist, and social activist. He served as vice chairman of the Standing Committee of the National People's Congress and vice chairman of the Chinese 
People's Political Consultative Conference. End of footnote one. I hope we will develop a mutually reinforcing and exemplary relationship of harmony between different civilizations. I hope that we will work together to launch the Forum of China, Latin America, and the Caribbean cooperation at an early date. We should give full rein to our respective strengths, build a strong partnership of comprehensive cooperation, and thus contribute more to stability and prosperity in the Asia-Pacific region. As a Chinese proverb goes, just as distance tests a horse's strength, time will show a person's sincerity. The growth of China, Latin America, and the Caribbean relations has proved and will continue to prove that ours is an open, inclusive, mutually beneficial, and cooperative relationship. We are convinced that a stronger partnership of comprehensive cooperation will boost the development of both sides, as well as the peace, stability, and prosperity of our respective regions and the world as a whole. Promote the Silk Road spirit. Strengthen China Arab Cooperation June 5th, 2014 Speech at the opening ceremony of the 6th Ministerial Conference of the China Arab States Cooperation Forum Your Excellency Prime Minister Jaber Secretary General El Arabi of the League of Arab States, heads of delegations, ladies and gentlemen, dear friends, assalamu alaikum, good morning, footnote one, assalamu alaikum, Arabic, meaning hello, end of footnote one. I am very happy today to get together with our Arab friends and discuss the development of the China Arab States Cooperation Forum, CASCF, and China Arab Relations. Footnote 2 Consisting of China and the 22 member states of the League of Arab States. The China Arab States Cooperation Forum was established on January 30th, 2004, aiming at strengthening the dialogue and cooperation between China and the Arab States to promote peace and development. End of footnote 2. Let me begin by extending on behalf of the Chinese government and our people, and in my own name, a warm welcome to all the guests, and let me offer my hearty congratulations on the convening of the Sixth Ministerial Conference of the CASCF. Arab friends always feel like old friends to me. This is attributable both to the warm and sincere attitude with which we treat each other and to the long history of exchanges between the Chinese and Arab peoples. Looking back on the history of exchanges between the Chinese and Arab peoples, we immediately think of the Land Silk Road and the maritime spice route. Our ancestors crossed the, the desert 
for months on end on post horses and sailed the oceans day and night, putting themselves at the forefront of friendly exchanges between different nations in the ancient world. Footnote 3. Fanye, The Book of Eastern Han, Ho Han Chu. Fan Yi, 398 to 450, 445, was a historian of the northern and southern dynasties. End of footnote 3. Footnote 4. Records of the manifestation of the goddess's power, Tian Fei Ling Ying Zhi Zhi, commonly known as as the inscription by Zheng He records the seven voyages by Zheng He to the Western Ocean, Indian Ocean. See note 4, page 288. End of footnote 4. Returning to the main text. Gan Ying, Zheng He, and Ibn Battuta were goodwill envoys for China-Arab exchanges whom we still remember today. Footnote 5. Gan Ying, dates unknown, was an envoy of the Eastern Han Dynasty. Being sent to the Roman Empire in the year 97, Gan Ying traveled to as far as the Persian Gulf, Persian Gulf before returning Although he did not reach Rome, his mission served to enhance China's knowledge of Central Asian countries. End of footnote 5. Footnote 6. Ibn Battuta, 1304 to 1377, was a Moroccan explorer. End of footnote 6, returning to the main text. It was by way of the Silk Road that China's four great inventions, papermaking, gunpowder, printing, and the compass, were transmitted via the, the Arab region to Europe. And it was also by way of the Silk Road that the Arabs' astronomy, calendrical system, and medicines were introduced to China, marking an important chapter in the history of exchanges and mutual learning between civilizations. For hundreds of years, the spirit embodied by the Silk Road, namely peace and cooperation, openness and inclusiveness, mutual learning and mutual benefit, has passed down through the generations. The Chinese and Arab peoples have supported each other in maintaining national dignity and safeguarding state sovereignty, helped each other in exploring development and achieving national rejuvenation, and learned from each other in encouraging people-to-people -people and cultural exchanges and revitalizing national culture. We will not forget the promise to support the cause of the Palestinian people that China made to the Arab states, with which we had not yet established diplomatic relations at the Bandung Conference 70, 60 years ago. Footnote 7. The Bandung Conference was a meeting of India, Indonesia, Burma, Myanmar, Ceylon, Sri Lanka, Pakistan, China, and 23 other Asian and African countries, which took place during April 18th to 24th, 1955, in Bandung, Indonesia. End of footnote 7. Nor will we forget the votes cast over 40 years ago by 13 Arab states together 
with our African friends for the PRC to regain its UN seat. We will not forget the 10,000 Chinese doctors who worked to save lives in the Arab states, nor will we forget the most generous aid China received from our Arab brothers after the massive Wenchuan earthquake. Ladies and gentlemen, dear friends, the next decade will be a crucial period for the development of both China and the Arab states. China has entered a decisive phase in its drive to complete the building of a moderately prosperous society in all respects, and the fulfillment of this goal represents a crucial step towards the Chinese dream of national rejuvenation. To do so, we have made overall plans for driving our reform to a deeper level. A key focus of this drive is to develop all-round international cooperation within an open economic system of quality and vitality, and to expand our common interests with various countries and regions in pursuit of mutual benefit. The Middle East is in a phase of unprecedented change, and the Arab states are making efforts to seek reform in their own way. The challenge of achieving national renewal calls on us to carry forward the Silk Road spirit, bolster development and cooperation, and constantly reinforce a strategic China-Arab relationship of comprehensive cooperation and common development. To promote the Silk Road spirit, we need to, bu to boost mutual learning between civilizations. There is no such thing as a good or a bad civilization. Rather, different civilizations are enriched through exchange. As a Chinese philosopher said, the matching of different colors leads to greater beauty, and the combination of different musical instruments creates harmony and peace. Footnote 8. Feng Yo Lan, Inscription on the Monument of National Southwestern Associated University. Complete works of San Song Tong, San Song Tong, Chuan Ji. Volume 14, Chinese Edition, Henan People's Publishing House, Zhengzhou, 2000, page. 154. Feng Yolan, 1895 to 1990, was a Chinese philosopher and historian of philosophy. End of footnote 8. China and the Arab states have always viewed each other with an open and inclusive attitude and exchanged in dialogues and exchanges, rather than conflict and confrontation. We have set a good example of harmonious coexistence between countries with different social systems, beliefs, and cultural traditions. China will never falter in its support for the Arab states in safeguarding their national cultural traditions and will oppose all discrimination and prejudice against any ethnic groups and religions. We should work together to advocate tolerance towards different civilizations and prevent extremist forces and ideas from creating division between us. To promote the Silk Road spirit, we need to respect each other's choice of development path. People don't need to wear the same shoes. They should find what suit their feet. Governments don't have to adopt the same model of governance. 
they should find what benefits their people. Footnote 9. Wei Yuan. Collected works of Wei Yuan. Wei Yuan Zhe. Wei Yuan, 1794 to 1857, was a thinker, Confucian classicist, historian, and poet of the Qing dynasty. End of footnote 9. Whether the path of a country is the right one is a matter to be decided by its people. Just as we do not expect all flowers to be violets, we cannot demand that countries with diverse cultural traditions, historical experiences, and contemporary national conditions should adopt the same development mode. That would make for a dull world. The Arab states are making their own efforts to explore their own development paths. We are willing to share our experience of governance with our Arab friends so that each can draw on the wisdom of the other's time-honored civilization and development mode. To promote the Silk Road spirit, we need to focus on mutually beneficial cooperation. What China pursues is common development which means we are aiming for a better life for the Chinese people and for the peoples of other countries. In the next five years, China's imports will surpass 10 trillion U.S. dollars worth, and our outward FDI will, surpa will surpass 500 billion U.S. dollars worth. In 2013, China's imports from the Arab states were worth 140 billion US dollars, accounting for only 7% of the annual 2 trillion US dollars in imported goods that China plans for the years ahead. And China's outward FDI to the Arab states was 2.2 billion US dollars, accounting for only 2.2% of the 100 billion US dollars in annual outward FDI that China plans for the years ahead. These facts represent an indicator of great potential and opportunity. China is happy to connect its own development with the development of the Arab states and to support them in promoting employment industrialization, and economic growth. To promote the Silk Road spirit, we need to advocate dialogue and peace. China firmly supports the Middle East peace process and the establishment of an independent state of Palestine. With full sovereignty, based on the 1967 borders, and with East Jerusalem as its capital. We hope the parties involved will take concrete measures to remove obstacles to peace talks and break the stalemate as soon as possible. China respects the reasonable demands of the Syrian people and supports the early adoption of the Geneva Communique and the opening of an inclusive political transition to bring about a political resolution to the Syrian issue. China is deeply concerned about the humanitarian situation in Syria and will provide a new batch of humanitarian aid to, to Syrian refugees in Jordan and Lebanon to alleviate their plight. China supports the establishment of a Middle East nuclear weapon-free zone and opposes any attempt to change the political landscape of the Middle East. China will play a constructive role in regional affairs, speak up for justice, 
and work with the Arab states to encourage dialogue as a way to find the greatest common denominator on issues of concern to all parties. We will direct a greater level of diplomatic effort to the proper settlement of regional flashpoints. Ladies and gentlemen, dear friends, the one belt and one road, namely the Silk Road Economic Belt and the Maritime Silk Road of the 21st century, represent paths towards mutual benefit, which will bring about closer economic integration among the countries involved, promote development of their infrastructure and institutional innovation, create new economic and employment growth areas, and enhance their capacity to achieve endogenous growth and to protect themselves against risks. As friends brought together by the Silk Road, China and the Arab states are natural partners in a joint effort to develop the One Belt and One Road. To develop the One Belt and One Road, the two sides need to follow the principles of discussion, joint development, and sharing of benefits. Discussion requires that we pool collective wisdom and carry out relevant initiatives through negotiations so that the interests and concerns of both sides are balanced and the wisdom and ideas of both sides are reflected. Joint development requires that we give full play to the strengths and potential of both sides so that a combination of efforts will lead to sustained progress. As the saying goes, a tower can be built one stone at a time. A pool can be formed from single drops of water. So we must persist in doing so. Sharing of benefits requires that both peoples benefit equally from the fruits of development, with a view to joining China and the Arab states even more closely through our shared interests and destiny. To develop the one belt and one road, the two sides need to be both far-sighted and down-to-earth. To be far-sighted, we need to produce the optimum top-level design, identify our orientation and goals, and establish a 1 plus 2 plus 3 cooperation pattern. 1 refers to cooperation in energy as the core. We will strengthen cooperation in the whole industrial chain of oil and natural gas, safeguard the security of energy transport corridors, and establish mutually beneficial, safe, and reliable strategic cooperation in energy based on long-term friendship. Two refers to two wings, one being infrastructure and the other being trade and investment. We will strengthen cooperation on major development programs and landmark projects for public well-being and devise relevant institutional mechanisms to facilitate bilateral trade and investment. China will encourage its enterprises to import more non-oil products from the Arab states and optimize its trade structure in a bid to increase the bilateral trade volume from last year's U.S. $240 billion worth to $600 billion U.S. worth in the decade ahead. China will also encourage its enterprises to invest in energy, petrochemicals, agriculture, manufacturing, and services in the Arab states, aiming to increase China's investment in the non-financial sector in the Arab states from last year's 10 billion US dollars to over 60 billion US dollars in the following decade. Three refers to using three advanced technologies 
nuclear energy, space satellites, and new energy. As breakthrough levers in an effort to raise the level of pragmatic China-Arab cooperation. The two sides may discuss the establishment of technology transfer centers, jointly develop training centers in the Arab states for the peaceful use of nuclear energy, and launch programs to introduce China's Beidou navigation satellite system to the Arab states. To be down to earth, we need to aim for quick successes. As an Arab proverb goes, words proved by action are the most powerful. We need to step up negotiations on programs on which consensus has already been reached and for which the foundations have been laid. Programs such as the free trade area between China and the Cooperation Council for the Arab States of the Gulf, the China United Arab Emirates Joint Investment Fund, and the Arab States' participation in the preparations for the Asian Infrastructure Investment Bank. These programs must be launched as soon as the conditions are right. The sooner we have substantial results to show from the development of the One Belt and One Road, the easier it will be to keep the various parties motivated and set examples for other programs. The two sides need to rely on and enhance the traditional friendship between China and the Arab states. The fostering of friendship between the two peoples of the two sides represents a key foundation and an important element of the One Belt and One Road. I hereby declare that China and the Arab states have decided to designate 2014 and 2015 as years of China-Arab friendship and to hold a series of friendly exchange events. We are also willing to enhance cultural exchanges by hosting arts festivals to encourage more students to engage in social exchanges with the other side, such as study, and to strengthen cooperation in tourism aviation, journalism, and publishing. In the next three years, China will train another 6,000 Arab people in various skills to be applied in the Arab states. We will share our experiences of development and poverty alleviation with the Arab states and introduce those of our advanced technologies that are suited to their needs. In the next decade, China will organize mutual visits and exchanges by 10,000 Chinese and Arab artists, promote and support dedicated cooperation between 200 Chinese and Arab cultural institutions, and invite and support 500 Arab cultural and artistic personages to study in China. Ladies and gentlemen, dear friends, the establishment of the CASCF was a strategic step taken for the long-term development of China-Arab relations. After 10 years, the forum has become an effective means by which we are able to enrich the strategic content of China-Arab relations and promote pragmatic cooperation between the two sides. Our joint efforts to develop the One Belt and One Road represent a new opportunity and a new starting point for upgrading the forum. Only by seizing this opportunity will we be able to maintain our current progress while ensuring sustainable development in the future. And only by starting from this new point will we be able to broaden our prospects and give further impetus to development.
In one sentence, the forum needs to serve as the basis of and support for further development between the two sides. We should take the forum as a lever to enhance communication on policy, instead of sidestepping the differences and problems between us, we need to treat each other in a frank and honest way, communicate with each other with regard to our respective foreign policies and development strategies, enhance political trust, and facilitate coordination strategies with a view to providing policy support for our cooperation. We should take the forum as a lever to extend cooperation in a pragmatic fashion. The development initiatives of both sides are mutually complementary. We need to promote the sharing of resources on both sides and talk and cooperate with each other with the greatest possible frankness and sincerity. Instead of trying to achieve headline-grabbing successes, collective cooperation should aim for measures that lay the foundations for long-term development. We should take the forum as a lever to forge ahead with innovation. Innovation constitutes the lifeblood of the forum. The two sides need to adopt new ideas new measures, and new mechanisms in a bid to resolve the difficulties that we encounter in pragmatic cooperation and clear practical bottlenecks and unlock potential for cooperation through a spirit of reform and innovation. Ladies and gentlemen, dear friends, the rapid development of China-Arab relations has created a close link in the destiny of the peoples of both sides. In Zhejiang province, where I used to work, there is a Jordanian businessman named Mohammed who runs a genuine Arab Arabian restaurant in Yiwu City, where a lot of Arab business people gather through bringing genuine Arabian cuisine to Yiwu. He has achieved business success in this prosperous Chinese city and has gone on to marry a Chinese girl and settle down in China. Integrating his own goals with the Chinese dream of happiness, this young Arab man has built a marvelous life for himself through his perseverance. He embodies a perfect combination of the Chinese dream and the Arab dream. Both the Chinese and the Arab nations have created splendid civilizations, and both have experienced setbacks amidst the changing times of modern history. Therefore, national rejuvenation has become the goal of both sides. Let us work shoulder to shoulder to promote the Silk Road spirit, strengthen China-Arab cooperation, realize the Chinese dream and Arab revitalization and strive for the lofty cause of peace and development for humankind. Shukran. Thank you. Footnote 10. Shukran. Arabic. Meaning, thank you.